Biovivacious. I am Sebastian. Biovivacious is a YouTube channel dedicated to clear fundamentals of biosciences and make the subject exciting. In the second roadblock is in converting fructose 1,6-bisphosphate into fructose 6-phosphate. So this is the structure of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. So an inorganic phosphate is removed with the help of a molecule of water. So therefore it is basically a hydrolysis reaction catalyzed by an enzyme known as fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase. So you will get fructose 6-phosphate. Okay, so remember in the forward reaction we had spent energy. Now we are not harvesting, we have in fact we have lost energy by this removal of the inorganic phosphate. So with this we come to the, we complete the second roadblock. Once we have fructose 6-phosphate, this will be converted black into glucose 6-phosphate. So this is by the isomerase enzyme will work and you will get glucose 6-phosphate. Now, in most tissues, gluconeogenesis will stop with this formation of glucose 6-phosphate. Okay, because glucose 6-phosphate will have multiple roles to play. Those tissues, especially liver and kidney, their, their responsibility is to convert glucose 6-phosphate to glucose. They will have a different enzyme. That enzyme is going to be glucose 6-phosphate phosphatase enzyme. Again, similar reaction occurs, water molecule, inorganic phosphate is formed, glucose is formed. Okay, so this is the how it bypasses the third block in order to produce glucose. Now glucose is produced, but we need to look at this particular reaction in detail. Let us see how this whole process works and what is the significance of this reaction. This glucose 6-phosphatase, uh, it is part of a multi-component of an integral membrane protein system which is located in the endoplasmic reticulum of liver, kidney, uh, etc. Because these are the organs which are associated with maintaining blood glucose level. Let us see how this mechanism works. Now for example, um, if you consider this is the cell in the cytoplasm these reactions were happening okay this is a cell now uh, this is the lumen which i'm drawing so we have formed glucose 6 phosphate is formed so what happens the one of the function of liver and kidney is to maintain blood glucose level so therefore it has to be released into the bloodstream this is the bloodstream so glucose must be released so in order to do that this glucose 6-phosphate is transferred into the lumen. So, so this is the lumen of ER. So you have glucose 6-phosphate transferred here. Now this transferring is carried out by another protein. And here is a protein which will allow this glucose 6-phosphate to be transferred inside. We shall call this one T1. Okay. So if the T1 stands for glucose 6-phosphate translocase. T1 glucose 6-phosphate translocase. Okay, glucose 6-phosphate translocase. Now, once glucose 6-phosphate is inside, this is acted upon by our enzyme. Now, the glucose 6-phosphate enzyme is present here. Okay, it is in this membrane. It is here. Glucose, this is glucose 6-phosphate enzyme is present in the membrane. So, this enzyme will act on glucose 6-phosphate. So you are going to get two things. One is inorganic phosphate, other one is glucose. Okay, now the glucose formed is immediately transferred back into blood. So this is with the help of a protein known as T2. So T2 stands for, it is a glucose translocase. See how many proteins are involved. So T2 helps in transporting glucose. It is not retained inside the cell. It is transported immediately into blood to maintain blood glucose level. What happens to PI? Now this PI, inorganic phosphate, is there is another translocase. So this is called, uh, this is T3. 
So if the T3 is T3 is uh, PI translocase. So this will transfer inorganic phosphate back into cytoplasm. So look at the, the complexes. So you have an enzyme which will hydrolyze and you need three other supporting proteins. One to take it inside Ti, T1, then T2 and T3. So T2 for transporting glucose into blood and T3 transporting inorganic phosphate back into the cytoplasm. So this is the complex mechanism by which it will maintain blood glucose level. So this is functional especially in liver and kidney. So this mechanism you will not find it in, um, in, in the tissues other than liver, kidney and intestine also this is found. So this is how the entire gluconeogenesis occurs. So now let us look at uh, the overall equation for gluconeogenesis. Now let us write the overall equation. So in the same manner by which we have learned to write stoichiometry in the case of glycolysis, I request that you go back to this. Um, we are once again writing the, uh, the stoichiometry to make things easy. I have already written it here. Now remember that um, from here to here. This will be, it has to be repeated twice. Each of these molecules will be two such molecules, then only two such glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate can join together to form one molecule of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Because each of these are three carbon compound and this is a uh, six carbon compound. So now, whatever is common, you need to keep cancelling. Like here, you know, you write OA cancel, OA cancel, PEP cancel, PEP cancel. So you keep on cancelling it. And at the end of it, whatever is remaining, so let us write down whatever is remaining. So you have a glucose, so inorganic phosphate, all that and fine. Let us write down whatever is remaining. That will be our overall equation for um, gluconeogenesis. So you take your time and do that stoichiometry and the overall stoichiometry will be 2 pyruvate okay, plus 4 ATP molecules plus 2 GTP molecules plus 2 NADH molecules plus 6 molecules of water that will give 1 glucose molecule plus 4 ADP plus 2 GDP plus 6 inorganic phosphate and 2 NAD plus plus 2 H plus this is going to be the overall stoichiometry for gluconeogenesis. What is important for us is to focus on this. In the energy expenditure, you are spending about 6 ATP equivalents for producing one mole of glucose. That is the important point that you need to uh, remember in this. As a kind of a homework, I would say that you try to reverse the stoichiometry for glycolysis and you prove that gluconeogenesis is not exactly a reversal of glycolysis. Stoichiometrically, you have to prove it. So this is a kind of a task I am just posing before all of you. So in, in gluconeogenesis, we have looked at the location, we have looked at the re reason for gluconeogenesis, we justified it. And we looked at the uh, precursor molecules that are required. We looked at the how we overcome the, uh, the three roadblocks in gluconeogenesis. We looked at the reactions, other reactions of gluconeogenesis. Then we have learned how to write a stoichiometry for gluconeogenesis. And finally, the energetics of gluconeogenesis. So I hope that it was an interesting and and uh, a motivating journey, a learning experience for all of us. Um, we will come up with more interesting topics in the next set of videos.